Thanks for joining us for the Fight for Your Marriage podcast with Charlene and Lori. This is a place where you can find hope for your marriage through Jesus Christ. Hey, we're so glad that you're here with us for another episode. I hope that your summer is going well and that you are enjoying um, the activities. I know summer can sometimes be a time to slow down and relax and enjoy some late nights. And it can also be a time where it can be discouraging because you see other people going on vacation or you may have to send your kids off with your spouse for an extended period. So we know it can sometimes be a lonely season. So today we have a special treat for you um, in sharing some special testimonies with you. And we love sharing testimonies. I love to have you hear other people share about what's going on in their lives and how God is moving in their lives so that you know that God does speak and he does move in lives. And you just need to talk to the Lord morning, noon, and night. If you are uh, going through a difficult time and discouraged, defeated, talk to the Lord about it and talk to him and I know he will speak to you. And sometimes when you hear testimonies from other people, there can be two responses. One response is you're inspired because you've heard this great, powerful testimony and how God has moved in a situation. And sometimes people can feel defeated because they can have jealousy come in and think, well, why didn't that happen for me? Or Positively. Why Lori, am I not seeing that answer to prayer? Positively. It's, what What about me, Lord? Why didn't you speak to me? That's just right. exactly what you So think. just recognize where that is coming from. It's not from God. And ask God to just help you to see his power in the situations that you're going to hear about today and ask him to show you that same power in your situation. Well, today's testimonies are coming from a group of people, and they were people that were able to come to town for our recent 30th anniversary celebration. And we had two opportunities to meet up with people. Um, One night, we had a group of -of out-of-state people come to our office, and we got to spend some time just fellowshipping with them and letting them get to know each other. And we opened the podcast room that night and invited people to come in and to just talk if they had something to share or if they wanted to just share a bit of their testimony. And the next night, we had our big event um, at a venue, and it was crowded and loud. And so you're going to hear some background noise from the people that shared during that event on the podcast and um, the difference between the people that were just sitting here in our podcast studio with us. But it was a great um, opportunity to just sit across from some special people and hear how God's moving in their life. And I know that this is going to bless you. And I'm going to challenge you to stick around till the very end because you're really going to love um, our last guest. And it will probably be the youngest guest that we've ever had on the Fight for Your Marriage podcast. But I'll give you that hint. <laughs> And also, I I would recommend that you think about writing a Saturday testimony. We love to hear from people on for Saturday testimonies of what God is doing in your life and the blessings and different things that happen. And so share that because it not only have you giving praise to the Lord for what He's doing, but it will bless and encourage others also. Okay, I'm sitting here with Delvis from Puerto Rico. So Delvis, what did God want you to share today? Well, um, I know you guys know that I lost my mom last year. Mm -hmm. And when you guys were doing the Zoom meeting, um, I was in the hospital with my brother, which Mm -hmm. he suffers from cerebral palsy. Once my mom passed away, um, I took the responsibility to take care of him. Yeah. Well... Um, he, 17 days later, he passed away as mm-hmm. well. And so, um, I, I just fell into this pity party. <laughs> um, I lost my mom. I lost my brother, which it was just the three of us. Mm-hmm. I lost, um, my husband. I lost my kids are, they live very far away. And so I was very, feeling very lonely, um, very sad. And so I started thinking, do I really want to stand? Do I really uh, want to keep on praying for marriage restoration? Um, 
uh, do I just want to continue with my life? And so a lot of doubts started mm-hmm. coming into me because of the, all the situation that was going on in my life. And so I remember talking to the Lord that night and when I woke up the next morning, and I always read uh, Charlene Kerr's devotionals mm-hmm. in the morning, well, guess what? The title was, Are You Planning on Quitting Your Stand? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay, Lord, I hear you. <laughs> and it was Bob who wrote uh, yeah. it. And um, I'm like, okay, Lord, do I really need something else? You yeah. know, another, um, a- another um, you know, like evidence, yeah. yeah, or sign mm-hmm. that I should keep on, keep on standing. I've been standing for um, seven years. In like the girls are talking, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's hard when you don't see anything happening. But yeah. it's like Charlize says, she, and she repeated it today again. Don't look at the circumstances. Yes. <laughs> uh, and so right now, um, I was a little bit concerned of okay, what's going to be now? I was in Puerto Rico to take care of my brother. Yeah. So, and everybody started asking me, are you going back? Are you going back to the mm-hmm. States? And um, and so I was driving to San Juan and I said, Lord, I want your plan in my life. You know, I, I don't want to do what I want. I want mm-hmm. you to tell me what you want me to do. So maybe one or two hours later, as I, as I was having lunch with my brother, well, he's a cousin for slash brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, I received a call, and it was a strange number. And, of course, I was receiving calls from because my brother had passed away, so Mm -hmm. Medicare was calling, you know. So I took the call, and it was the Department of Education. I'm an English teacher in Puerto Rico. I've been working for them for only nine months. Mm -hmm. Uh, I lost my seniority in Florida because I had to go take care of my family. And so um, they said, we are calling you because you are being now appointed permanent. So I was like, what? So so you're permanent. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, (laughs) You have to go to the employee portal and agree to it. And I said, okay, I'll do it when I get home. No, you have to do it now. So I'm in the cell phone just answering. And I said, Lord, this was such a quick answer. Yeah. Such a quick answer. Um, and I just have to praise the Lord. Um, I've been following you guys mm. all this time. And whenever I needed a response from the Lord, God had used you or oh. Charlene or Bob. Okay. So I, I just wanted to share that. Praise I, God for your ministry. And I hope that you continue many, many, many years to be there for us. Thank you for sharing that. I love that. Um, today our sermon at church was on John 4, and it was when Jesus healed the official's son, and the official had to travel what was 18 hours by foot to get to Jesus to say, I need you to heal my son. And in verse um, 50, so John chapter 4, verse 50, Jesus replied, you may go, your son will live. And this man had to travel back 18 hours by foot to get back to his son, when he was walking, he'd pass some royal officials, and they told him, your son's been healed. And when he asked Jesus, when did he get healed? It was at the exact time that Jesus had met with him. Mm-hmm. And so what he was saying today is we think that God's not answering our prayers because we don't necessarily see them. And you got the blessing of having such a quick turnaround and answer to prayer. Mm-hmm. But there's other prayers that we pray that God may already be answering, and we just don't see the evidence of that yet. But that's our faith that we have to have. For when we see those quick ones, those are great. But the ones when we're saying, Lord, I've been praying about this for so long, help me hold on. That's when you have to do what you said, stop looking at your circumstances. (laughs) Yes. So thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. You're welcome. (laughs) My name is Melanie. I am 24 years old and I am from Indianapolis, Indiana, and I am standing for my marriage. Um, I've been standing for two years now. Um, This week will be two years. Um, We were married for one amazing year Mm -hmm. and now been separated for two. Um, And I want to help change the next generation Mm -hmm. um, because of what you guys have shared in your testimony in your podcast. I hope to be on your podcast Mm -hmm. someday, Mm -hmm. maybe even write a book, but I would really... I'd really love to help change future generations and impact them, um, the generations before me and 
upcoming with the world that we live in these days that is just so up and ready to, you know, call it quits Mm -hmm. um, and move on to the next person and the next person. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just really want to impact the generations if I believe that's kind of God's will, um, hopefully. (laughs) Do you have people around you telling you that you should just move on, you're young, and you should start over? Kind of, yes, but it's more so that people don't understand when I do tell them where I'm, where right. I'm at. So no, I'm not, I don't really have, I moved to a new city, so I don't really have family around me. I mm-hmm. have some friends and stuff that I'm trying to grow in a community with, but have never, not really crazy had a home for the most part that mm-hmm. I felt connected to, traveled around a lot. Um, and so, yeah, um, praying for, you know, my prodigal. So it's somebody else right now. I don't know what else, just, I won't get too into yeah. it, but yeah, and actually, um, I had filed for divorce, um, and then I found your ISIS podcast, oh. and I stopped filing. So wow. um, he knows that I stopped filing, and mm-hmm. I I didn't really proclaim at all that I was really like fighting for the restoration. He mm-hmm. just knows that when I stopped filing, um, I was not going to continue divorce, but I didn't really proclaim that. So he doesn't know mm-hmm. really the extent of it, and probably has forgotten <laughs> all of that. He, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I have no contact, um, with him. So, yeah. (laughs) Wow. It's hard. Do you feel like it's difficult because you don't have contact? Like how will he ever know that I'm standing? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yes, for sure. I feel like it's God's timeline, honestly. Um, of course it's not crazy about the time, but I feel like he's spoken to me that Kyle and I both have a calling on our life. Um, it's not just my story. It's his testimony Mm -hmm. too. I think, Um, he is, I'm going to see him be, uh, walking in recovery. He Mm -hmm. struggles with substance abuse. Okay. Um, and so I'm just believing he actually reason kind of why we had parted was about that. And, um, I found out that he became sober, Mm -hmm. which is amazing. Wow. Um, so I'm trying to live alcohol free too. (laughs) Um, but yeah, I definitely believe I'll see him restored and he's got a testimony on his life. People just would come up to us and tell us, Hey, um, he would, they would come up to Kyle and be like, do you know the calling that you have on your yeah. life? And, um, so yeah, it's definitely, definitely challenging to answer your question. Yeah. That I'm, I'm waiting though. And, you know, I know it'll be God's miracle, whatever it's, however it's going to look. I love out. that. And I love that you were young and proclaiming this because so many people would probably encourage you and say, you know, you have a whole life ahead of you, meet somebody else and and move on. And that's not what God's will is. That's not what God's word would say. And that's not God's best yeah. for you. And I think your desire to help this generation understand marriage and really, like our desire over the past couple of years has been to back things up and to say, we want people to understand how to date well so they can marry well, mm-hmm. so they cannot end up in this situation. Because so yeah. often other, and I don't know if it's your story, but other couples will say, well, I knew when we were dating that yeah. they weren't saved. I shouldn't have gotten married. Or I knew when they were dating, they were abusive or mm-hmm. whatever it is. And so it's such a need to be able to back up and to say, listen, you can marry God's person for you and and you can live for the Lord and have a marriage that serves Christ. And yeah. I think that's a message that, that this generation needs to hear. Yes, so. thank you. And the yeah. generations um, behind as well. Yes. But yeah, just thank you so much. It's definitely believing for it as well. And yeah, um, yeah I believe Kind of, that's pretty much all. Um, awesome. You know, hope to share the testimony later and forever and always. Well, you we'll know? be ready for it. Well, thank, thank you, you for sharing, Melanie. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> Perla, where are you from? I'm from West Texas. Okay, great. We have a lot of Texas people here tonight. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so what's God been doing in your life? I am the daughter of a prodigal. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom and stepdad um, separated mm-hmm. when I was 18. Mm-hmm. And then shortly after that, my mom left me and in care of my two youngest sisters. And so I didn't know back then that, that this was a spiritual war, but I did know that she was my mother and I want, God wanted me to honor her. And so there was a time where we didn't have communication, but I kept the door open for her. I knew that my little sisters needed her. So I didn't understand back then. um, We were raised Catholic. I didn't understand back then 
that this was a spiritual war. Uh, and so throughout that, um, we became Christians. And, and so we started going to church. And um, my mom, she um, started a new family with a, a new husband. And in the meanwhile, me and my husband were raising my, my little sisters. And so when I had my first daughter, my mom was diagnosed with cancer, with breast cancer. And I think that that helped her understand her need for the Lord. And so she battled that for a few years and um, she was in remission for a couple of years. And then she had my youngest sister. And then shortly after that, they found brain tumors. And so every health difficulty that she encountered brought her closer to the Lord. And this whole time she lived, she lived an hour and a half away from us. We were not living close. Though we started seeing her more regularly and we would always ask her to move back closer to us. And um, after, um, after, many years <laughs> she did move back closer to us and she surrendered her life to the Lord and are you standing for your marriage now so shortly after her death uh -huh. my husband left okay so, yes I am standing for my marriage but what I lived through with my mom mm -hmm. uh, I had no idea the spiritual side of it yes but once I started standing for my marriage, it's like God showed me yes. my comic strip yes. of, of mistakes, and I realized yeah. that this is greater than I am. Yes, that this is um, this is a fight that needs to be fought on my knees for generations. Yes, ma'am. Like for you generations. saw that because of what you've been through, exactly. that it affects generations. Yes. So that's amazing. I hope that that strengthens your resolve to stand and fight because do you have children now? I do. I have two children. Okay. And, so, and when you look at them, how old are they? Uh, four and six. And you can think like it's years away until they get married and start their family. And now's the time to start praying for them and the people they're going to marry that they would have God honoring marriages and that they would see in you a person that's fighting for their dad and fighting for this marriage. Yes, so I think that's that. It's amazing how God shows us those things, isn't it? Right. Oh. I would have never thought yeah. when I was 18 that this would be used for a good. Right, right. But now I just give God glory for the work that yes. I saw in my mom's life. Yeah. And now it, it, it helps me stand in for but my marriage. But God. Yes. <laughs> I love but that. God. Well, thank yes. you for sharing with us. All right, Audra, where are you from? Originally Miami, I live in Hollywood. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, well, what's God been doing in your life? I guess real quick, I've been restored since 2015. Wonderful. Um, and I got to meet your mom tonight, and I thanked her because your ministry came to me in the darkest time in my life, and it was like a lifeline for me. Mm -hmm. And I read all of Charlene Cares, and I did what she said to do. And I pray, I still pray scriptures. Yeah. I have a book where I pray scriptures for my husband. I have another book where I pray scriptures for my daughter. And I've just decided I'm not going to give up. Doesn't matter how long it takes. Mm -hmm. um, my marriage is restored. So mm -hmm. praise, the, praise Lord the Lord for that. My husband doesn't yet have a personal relationship with Jesus, mm -hmm. but God gave me a vision that um, the vision is from Jeremiah um, 17 uh, verses seven and eight of a, it's a tree. And it says, um, uh, let me see, now I'm going to forget it. Um, he will be like a tree firmly planted by a stream of living water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are green. It is not anxious in a year of drought, and it never fails to bear fruit. And God gave me that vision for my husband. Yeah. And so I just claim that. And I'm just going to keep on praying. And I've seen the changes. Like even today, mm -hmm. today I feel like there was a little breakthrough because um, my husband was unfaithful to me and, 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 and God, you know, ended that in 2015. Good. But it's a process yes. of restoration and rebuilding yes. trust. But today, even though my husband has apologized to me, 
but I never saw him like sh- really show remorse. Mm-hmm. But today he cried, and wow. today he actually, <clears throat> excuse me, showed remorse for what he did, wow. and that's the first time I've seen that's that. Huge. So I I know God is working, and I also have to praise God because my husband went on a mission trip with me for the first time. We just got back from Costa Rica, wow. and my husband, and my daughter, both went on the mission trip with me. My husband shared his his testimony about, you know, the people that he met. And I really saw God loving my husband through the people yes. on the mission trip. Yes. And even though, again, you know, my husband, he's not saved yet, but he's experiencing God's love. And I see how God is like softening him. Yes. So I give praise to God and I thank you for your ministry. And I just feel very blessed. Thank you. Well, I think that's amazing. And I love that your prodigal husband you saw Christ in you, and now he's come home and he still gets to see Christ and all these other people. And that's what we're called to do is to love the way we're loved. And so I love that that is what he's seeing. What a miracle that he went on that mission trip. Yes, and, answering prayer. <laughs> and who knows what is happening in his heart and in his mind with the things that he's seen and, and feeling. And like John Wesley said tonight that he saw Jesus and Jennifer, and I'm sure that's what your husband is seeing in you, is that love of Jesus. So that's awesome. Well, thank, thank you for you. sharing. I thank love that. You. And call us when he gets saved, because we can't oh, wait to yes. celebrate with you. I will be <laughs> shouting it from the yes. rooftops. <laughs> thank Thanks, you. Audra. Nice to meet you. Well, what's God been doing in your life and in your stand? Well, um, a recent development has happened with uh, uh, the testimony I want to share is uh, for Mother's Day. Um, my hus- my prodigal husband, he um, he hugged me and, and told me Happy Mother's Day. Wow, that's which nice. Which he has not done, um. and uh, he didn't do it last year or the year before. So I really take that as God is softening his yes. heart and helping him to see the value that I did have, yes. you know, as a mother. He gave me a mother's mother's ring, like when our children, were, when my last child was like two years old. Yeah. And um, he's, but he's not really been showing that he valued me yeah. as a mother. And this year he, he has. So I just want to encourage people that, you know, God uh, honors you as a mother if you've been stand, you know, in your stand. So standing for your family. Well, I love that you got to get that from him and to feel that. And it's hard some days when you feel like there's no recognition or appreciation mm. for what you've done. Right. And so, and that's where, like the Bible says, that Jesus will be your husband for this season. Right. And, you know, where you have right. to say, Lord, it hurts so bad. I mm. want to I wanna hear those words. Right. And I love that you got to at I least know. get that glimmer of appreciation. Yes. So yes. I hope that's the first of many that you amen, get from him. <laughs> amen, amen. Well, thank you for sharing. All right, Stephanie, what, what are you going to share with us tonight? <laughs> so I was speaking with Donna, um, and I was saying, I'm believing, I, I believe that the Lord kind of gave me this vision of my husband and I sharing a joint testimony. Yes. And I don't, he's not there yet. Yeah. Um, I'm so grateful for the gentleman who shared today that even yes. this morning, you know, recognizing forgiving himself was mm-hmm. kind of the missing piece for him. Right. Um, and so I, you know, to be able to pray more strategically in that mm-hmm. area for my husband, yeah. I'm grateful for that. I was here today. Um, but what I was sharing with Donna, I was saying that, you know, when when God restored our marriage, it, it, for me, I recognized that it was, and I think we always say it, but it was when I stopped trying to control and I stopped trying to manipulate and I stopped, I zipped my lips and I took my hands off of it and I truly surrendered to yeah. him. Yeah. Um, That's and, not easy. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. But I think that, you know, for me and what I was sharing with Donna, sometimes in, in certain areas where it seems a little bit smaller, yeah. it's, it's, you know, believing God for a house, you know, sometimes yeah. it's like, okay, well, I can do this and I can do that and I could, but for a marriage that's so dead, you know, yeah. it was in some ways easier to surrender because it was like, this is literally yeah. impossible yeah. with man. It is impossible, but yeah. not with God, you know, yeah. um, not, not easy, but 
I, I don't know. I don't know the best way to put yeah. it. Like it seemed like it was so dead and impossible. There was, not, there was no there was hope. Not, yeah, there was there was nowhere yeah. else to go. It, it, yeah. I mean, it couldn't possibly get worse. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So it, it was kind of like, all right, you know. And, yes. And the, I, I love what the woman said that you know. Um, it's something to the effect of like how hard headed am I that God has to keep <laughs> coming in this area? You know, I think unfortunately it had to get to such a dire place yeah. for me to surrender. Yeah. Um, and, and and prayerfully that's not the case for everyone. Yeah. But I'm, I hear everyone say it. I would not. I would not wish this on my worst yes. enemy. If I could rewrite the yeah. story, I would. But I'm. I can't. I'm so incredibly grateful yeah. for how God changed my life. That's how God changed my husband you. Did you and our see marriage. Him change you oh, one hundred percent. And and just yeah. like everyone has shared, the yeah. only reason my marriage was restored is because of the grace of God. It's yes. because of the change that my husband saw in me. Yes. That was only Jesus. Yeah. Um, we both grew up in the church. We've yeah. seen Jesus people and and church yeah. people, but to see the power of God mm-hmm. right there yeah. um, for us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love it. I love it. I can't wait till your husband comes with you and shares a oh, testimony so together. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Well, thanks for sharing that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Donna, the famous Donna, who many of you have prayed with and talked to and maybe received an email from, is sitting down to share with us. So, Donna, what's on your heart? I just wanted to say that we get so many emails, Mm -hmm. and we wanted to let you know that every single email, we are praying for you. We don't just read that email Mm -hmm. and put it away. We have you in our hearts Mm -hmm. and our minds, and we have a prayer ministry going on here, and you are prayed for. I just wanted to let you you know that yeah. that Charlene is a prayer warrior. Yes, she is. <laughs> um, but every email, so please continue to send them in. Please yeah. continue to give us updates and let mm-hmm. us know what's going on because we want you to know you're not alone in yeah. your stand. That you are being prayed for at Rejoice Marriage Ministries. This yep. is a prayer team, and you're not alone. God yep. bless you. It can you. feel so isolating, right? Mm-hmm. But I know that you've had the benefit of praying for people and the blessing that you get yourself yes. by hearing them say, I was struggling today, and you happened to call me, or I was struggling, and I got your message. And that's a blessing when, when we are, you know, being able to see that. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. All right. Thanks, Donna. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Diane and Dwayne, you have a restored marriage. Yes. All right. How long have you been restored? Always, we were just talking about that it's hard to figure out what exactly restored was, but we've never been divorced. Okay. Or separated. Okay. So we. Not that I didn't try. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we walked through some prodigal years. Yes. And so, but seven months ago, God really brought some new restoration, took back some enemy Wonderful. territory. Wonderful. Wonderful. What's he been doing since then in your marriage? Healing. 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 Yeah. Uh, healing, healing hurts. And uh, as far as me, he's been really using me as far as uh, teaching and, and ministry and uh, just in a... In a powerful and meaningful way. Mm-hmm. Yes, Dwayne's always been a wonderful preacher and mm-hmm. teacher. And I think the enemy just wanted to sit him down and shut him up. Yep. And that he was successful of that. He discouraged yeah. him and then he came against our marriage. Mm-hmm. And in that season, we didn't do any of that teaching or ministering to others. And yeah. so, yes, yeah, since it's about seven months ago, that's when, you know, like I said, we took back some big territory yeah. that the enemy had still camped out mm-hmm. on. And in that, free doing up a lot. Yeah. And so we began to really turn our lives together mm-hmm. over to God and the Holy Spirit every day to guide us and direct us mm-hmm. and use us. And it's it's been amazing. I love that. How did you find out about Rejoice Marriage Ministries? Desperate one night uh-huh. searching the internet. <laughs> God just took me there. Yeah. And I used to, years ago, um, know exactly what time in the middle of the night that that email was going to be there. (laughs) Because on lots of those sleepless nights, I wake up and think, oh, darn, it's not there yet. And then it's like, oh, I got my email. And I get up in the middle of the night to read it because it just gave me the hope I needed. It just, I don't know how we would have hung on without it. It's been so amazing for us. Dwayne, did you see hope for your marriage, or did you think we had too many problems, there was no hope of ever having a loving marriage? I think I uh, 
had bought into some lies that the enemy had told me mm-hmm. and that um, he told me that I didn't need to be in that marriage and that yeah. it was never going to work and there was not any hope that it would ever be a good marriage. Yeah. And, and I bought into those yeah. lies. And what did you think when you saw your wife loving you and saying, there's hope? <laughs> <laughs> It was tough. Yeah. Uh, I, there, there were honestly times that I, I just kind of pushed her away yeah. during that. Yeah. How didn't, did that? Didn't want to hear that. Right. How did that feel? It was discouraging sometimes, mm-hmm. but I reminded myself a lot. I didn't stand for him. Mm-hmm. I stood for God, mm-hmm. and that it wasn't up to either one of us to mm-hmm. heal our marriage. It was yeah. up to God. Yes. And so even in those times, God told me over and over, love him well. Yep. Just love him well. Yep. And I just focused on that. And I knew there was a time I thought, he's just hurt. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes we don't recognize that as grown adults, we get hurt. Yes. And we act out of that hurt in mm-hmm. ways that are, you know, not good. Mm-hmm. And I just could see him in that. God gave me that vision of him hurting. Yeah. You know, I think it... I had to come to the point where I realized that in and of myself, there was nothing that I could do to be the man that God had created me to be or the husband that God had called me to be, the husband that she needed. And I had to come to that place to where I had to start my day every morning with the first thing that I do, and I still do it to this day, is I pray for the Holy Spirit to fill me and to lead me and guide me and direct me Mm -hmm. to live to operate in the spirit and not according to the flesh yeah and to keep that default fleshly mode turned off because Mm -hmm. if if i don't do that i know what's going to happen yeah i'm going to start operating in the flesh again and and probably make some of the same mistakes i made in the past It's not easy. It's a daily surrender, like you said. (laughs) Sometimes hour by hour, right? (laughs) Yes. That's right. Yes. So I love that. Well, thank you for sharing what God is doing. And you guys know this is a great chance for me to plug. We have a Restored and Redeemed devotional that is for restored couples. So I hope that you're reading that and it's benefiting from it. And I want to invite you, if you ever want to write and share something, please do. And we would love to share that. The couples love hearing from people who are walking that same journey with them. So. So, you know, one cup, one girl shared tonight that her marriage has been restored for five months. And she said, it's not easy back together and saying, okay, we're now this 2.0 version of who we were. Now we have to react and act differently. And that's not always easy. So thank you for sharing that. I love that. Well, one of our, our main points that Dwayne's always telling me, we're better than ever. Yes. We're- yep. I yeah. think that was brought out tonight. We're not going back to who we right. were. It's not restored to that. Yes. It's better than ever. I love that. Yeah. I love it. Thanks, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> You have a restored marriage, Kevin and Marianne. So how long have you been restored? It'll be uh, 10 years, September 8th. I love that. So what what has God been doing in your life? Uh, he's brought us together, opened our eyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's taught us how to communicate. Um, as I mentioned before, um, we are Catholic, so that uh, we've gone to different um uh, marriage ministry uh, seminars. Uh, besides this one, we went to uh, Married for Life. That was through the church. And then um, then we went to, um, what is it, Marriage? Marriage Encounter. Marriage Encounter. It was in Orlando. Um, we do, um, Jimmy Evans has, a, we just got done. Uh, he had the 30-day uh, I, I Will. I Will. Oh, yes. And, um, they have a book that does um, 365 days each day. Is a uh, a prayer, um, uh, a scripture, mm-hmm. and then a question. Yes. And then we talk how how we uh, through our marriage. Uh, what do we need to work on? What have we worked on? Did you ever do that previously? Did mm-hmm. you have that type of relationship that you would talk no. and no. and we didn't pray. We we went to church every week. yeah. But we didn't really, we didn't pray together. Yeah. No. Not yeah. like we do now. 
Yeah. So yeah. you're seeing how those tools are such fruit in your marriage, right? Right. Yeah. We thank the Lord so much more yeah. often than we did. You know, it, it, prayer was just, this is what's happening. Yeah. And now prayer is more... Thank you for this. Thank you for this. Thank you. Even, even when it's something that's bad. It's amazing how it becomes a relationship instead of a ritual. Like, right. okay, I prayed, check, now I can move on. Yeah. And when you have a relationship with the Lord, how it becomes so personal to do that. It's more constant. Yes. It's it's you I wake up, I go to sleep. You know, I, I when 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 he was gone, I mean I'd wake up in the middle of the night and that would be I would just pray until I fell asleep. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you are using the tools that are available because like we've always said, just because your marriage is restored, you can't say, okay, I can let off the gas now. Everything's fine. My spouse is back home. My wife is living for the Lord. My husband's whatever. You have to continually work to, to do those things in your marriage to stay connected to one another emotionally and, and to say, hey, have I wronged you today or what? How are we doing in this area? So I love that you're using those tools. And like I brought up to you earlier, it's, it's um, the husband's um, need to take responsibility. Yes. It's not um, as, as much as we always hear about the wives are praying yes. and, and so forth. Yes. It's, but the change has to happen in the husband. Yeah. And they have to understand that not be not be so selfish. Yeah. That, oh, oh because they changed, now it's better. Yeah. But no, we both have to have that understanding right. of what we're doing and respect that other person. Yeah. Like before in the testimony, one was the, the king and the fool. Right. Well, for me as a husband, it's the queen or the fool. Mm -hmm. So I have to be able to understand. Yeah. I can't be putting her down. Right. And think that, oh, it's okay for me, but not okay right. for her. Right. It and goes have, both ways. And to have that respect. Yeah. Yeah. And that understanding that when it's time that she wants to talk, I pause the TV and yeah. turn it off. Yeah. Let's go talk. Yeah. That's or great. Instead of saying, yes, dear. Yes, yeah. dear. And three weeks later, yeah, yeah, we'll talk when it's. Yeah. 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 So you have a, a different way to handle marriage. Yes. Is that fair to say? Right. And yeah. It, that's a, uh, a different type of testimony. Yes. That we don't hear, and that's what yeah. we were talking about yeah. earlier. That uh, I'm, I'm uh, glad to share with you yeah. that we saw each other today. Yeah, I love that. To be that. able to uh, make sure that... Uh, we as husbands have to take the responsibility just as much yes. as, as the, the wife. I think that is our prayer as a nation. You know, we have a lot of men who have stepped back and are not leading their, their wives and their families as the spiritual leaders they should be. And they've kind of left it to their wives to do. And we need men to step up and do that. I think that's well, amazing. And I think the, the gentleman that was here before yeah. we were talking was, that's how we were raised. Yes. You know, yes. when... When you were in touch with your feelings as a man, yeah. you were weak. Right. You know, crying is not weakness. Yeah. Crying is strength. Yeah. To be able to say, I have a problem, mm -hmm. you know, uh, not only with suicide or drugs, yeah. but I have a problem in my marriage. Right. We need to understand. Yeah. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah. And for the spouse not to make fun of them or think that they don't understand. Right. And uh, so that that's... That's a big part. That's a reprogramming that has yeah. to happen and for generations to change going forward to understand that. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing, well, thank you, you guys. Thank you again. I'm glad for we got years. to meet you. Andrew from New Mexico. How old are you, Andrew? I'm 12. 12 years old. Okay, tell me about your family before you start. Um, we are a family. <laughs> And families have faults, and yes. they have good things. Yes. It's very, very complex, yes. I would say. All families are. Yeah. Is it your family? Well, you are. My mom is my mom. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> so, my mom and my dad, and that's where all, like, the stuff happens, because they the whole restored marriage thing yeah and my sister Addie with Down syndrome and all the various animals that we have <laughs> and then me you got a busy life huh yeah so what do you think about this what you're here 
and your mom and dad shared their testimony tonight, a little bit of your story of what happened in their marriage, and what do you think about all that? I think that it's cool that we get to be a part of all of this. Yeah. And we get to be, like, in, well, they get to be an example to yeah. all of the to all of the people standing in their marriage. Yeah. I think that's cool. I love that. Mm -hmm. And it was before you were born that that they went through their um, marriage problems and restoration. Can you tell that story? You've heard it many times. Yeah, I've heard it. I've heard it many times. I'll do it the best I can. So they were, mom and dad, they were um, split apart at this time. And in this time, my mom grew very close with the Lord yeah. and started to read her Bible a lot more. And so she'd wake up early to read the Bible. And so she was reading her Bible in the morning, and God spoke to her. And as she says, one of the times when God was, like, the most... What what do you use? Like well, almost audible, not yeah, quite audible, audible, but it was like like a strong hearing from the Lord in a strong way. That she would have a son, and she like laughed at God and was Absolutely, like, yeah. "I am, I'm almost divorced. I don't have a husband. Like, what? Am, how? How is this gonna work?" And so she heard that. Apparently, I was supposed to be named Andrew, but she, it wasn't the. That was the less clear part. And then. It was pretty clear. <laughs> and then on Sunday, then she, our, the pastor at the time of our church, well, our old, our, whatever, the pastor at the time of the church she was going to, Pastor Matt, came up and said that today we're going to preach about Andrew the disciple. <laughs> And mostly you hear about Peter, but today we're going to speak about Andrew and how he was the first disciple and that he was the disciple that, like, brought Peter the rock. And so she was like, okay, God, I believe in you. Well, and I did believe it, but that confirmed it. Yeah, it, com- it confirmed it. And so then... You, and now here sits Andrew. Yeah. So af- after a little bit of a gap of time, that here I am. I, I love that. And I remember your mom telling me that story for the first time. And I know you've probably heard it a million times, right? Mm-hmm. How special you are to her. And it seemed impossible. Yep. But God. But God. But, but God. God. And thank goodness for Grandma Charlene. Yeah. Yes. And Bob. You didn't know Bob, but yeah, I yeah, I knew. But you know. I did. Yeah. Well, I know it's hard to believe now, but someday you might want to get married, and mm-hmm. and when you're grown up and you're getting married and having your own family, you're going to look back like I did at what your parents have done and the legacy that they've built for you. And it's amazing. Helps you go forward as an adult. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, you have a pretty awesome family. Yeah. Thank you for sharing them with us. (laughs) You did a great job. Yeah. That's what I have to say. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Divorce strikes families around the world, often with little notice. You can help us minister to these families with your financial gift. Visit RejoiceMinistries.org and help us teach men and women what Jesus can do for their hurting family. If we can help you in any way, we invite you to visit the website of Rejoice Marriage Ministries at www.RejoiceMinistries.org. Thanks for joining us today as we proclaim that God heals hurting marriages.